these two great scientists, about a hundred years after the discovery of hydrogen and the realization that it, that is an element, still couldn't seem to place hydrogen on the periodic table. Well, hey, everybody, it's Professor Davis here again for another Table Tuesday. Um, well, we got started at the top left corner of the periodic table uh, of our last two talks discussing things like, is there a row zero? Is there an element zero? And so it seems to stand to reason. Let's stay up there, but kind of explore the remainder of that area just a little bit. Hydrogen, right? Simplest of all the elements. Now that we know that for sure, where does hydrogen actually belong on the periodic table? So if you're a student of chemistry or any modern chemist for that matter, most likely is going to place hydrogen up here in the top left corner of the table where we most often see it in you know, all popular periodic tables that we come across in books and on the internet. <clears throat> but hydrogen didn't always find its home there. There was a period in time where there was a significant debate going on about where exactly hydrogen belongs. And in fact, that debate can still really be carried out today if we look carefully at the periodic table. Now, at first blush, that may seem a little surprising, but just take a look at some of the first periodic tables ever created. Right? Those by, say, like Meyer and Mendeleev. Well, Meyer and Mendeleev had trouble placing hydrogen in any kind of meaningful place in their first periodic table offerings. Take a look at Mendeleev's, where he places hydrogen sort of out in open space with no particular relationships uh, about it. And Meyer's, well, Meyer didn't even attempt to place hydrogen on the periodic table. It was nowhere to be found in his first offering. So these two great scientists, about 100 years after the discovery of hydrogen and the realization that it, that is an element, still couldn't seem to place hydrogen on the periodic table. <clears throat> now we can understand a little bit more about why this debate still continues today if we consider the modern periodic table and atomic structure. All right, so hydrogen could be anywhere in the top row of the table. That's a lot of real estate there for us to place it. As long as we want to keep that that uh, atomic number ordering, we basically have access to everything left of helium on the table as a potential position for hydrogen. But I'm going to make three arguments today. There are three places that you could really make at least a somewhat sound argument. Hydrogen should go into the modern periodic table. Those are where we are accustomed to seeing it most of the time over here in group one, but also in groups 14 and 17 of the periodic table placing it in different positions of the main block. So let's take a moment and consider the argument for each of these three positions. So making the case for group one elements. Uh, if we take a look at hydrogen in the alkali metals, there are some obvious similarities. And the probably the single most important similarity that keeps hydrogen in this position on most periodic tables is the S1 valence shell electron configuration. So these are what we call isoelectronic with one another. And that means that hydrogen is going to present a face to the world that looks very much like the alkali metals, having just one electron in its outermost shell. Okay? So that's a big deal. That's really why it's there today. And because of that, hydrogen tends to form plus one ions, as do the uh, uh, alkali metals. And therefore, it tends to form compounds with similar elements and similar proportions to those. And that's probably the main reason why we see hydrogen in group one most of the time. Now, you can see here that hydrogen found its way into group one of the periodic table very, very early on. As early as the 1870s, Mendeleev was already placing hydrogen in pretty close proximity to those alkali metals. He knew there was something special about them and that they were similar because of their chemical reactivities and their valence. But there are two more places. So let's think about the opposite side of the table. Now, let's think about group 17, where you might want to place hydrogen. Why might we want to put hydrogen there? Well, because all of the group 17 elements are one electron short of a closed valence shell. Right now, fluorine through tennessine, hypothetically, would have valence shells that are S2P5. And whereas hydrogen is just an S1. However, remember that there is no P subshell in the first valence shell. And that means that hydrogen is just one electron shy. And so it is indeed possible right, for these to have a lot of chemical similarities. For example, they tend to form minus one ions. Now hydrogen can form a plus one proton, but it can also form a minus one hydride ion. We see this in some compounds that hydrogen can form. 
So we know that it does behave in some ways a little bit like the halogens. And maybe more importantly than that, they covalently bond to form diatomic elements, right? We tend to see H2, F2, Cl2, Br2. And so these are forming small discrete molecules that are covalently bonded with two atoms per molecule, quite a similarity. And so this has prompted some over the years to point out the similarity in their periodic tables. Take this example from the 1920s, where the famous Gilbert and Lewis of Lewis structure fame chose to place hydrogen above the halogens and not above the alkali metals. So clearly Lewis thought there was something to this association, and he was most likely relying on the fact that they form similar types of chemical bonds and similar types of molecules in their elemental states and when combined with one another. All right, now let's really stretch out there and look at the third possibility. The third possibility is going to be group 14 above or just nearly above carbon. So why do I say that? <clears throat> well, the group 14 elements in the main block are unique because they're halfway to a closed valence shell. Here we have S2P2, that's four electrons in the valence shell, which can hold eight for each of those elements. Now, hydrogen has one of two possible electrons in its valence shell. So this leads to some similar behaviors. Because they have half-filled valence shells, they can form compounds existing exclusively of single bonds that have no lone pairs on the central atoms. They also tend to have similar electronegativities. Now, this is a bit of a stretch because you'll notice that the trend isn't perfect. However, the electronegativity of hydrogen puts it more closely associated with group 14 than with either groups one or 17. And so if you were to place it atop that row, you might have to shift it a little bit off to the side to get it a little bit closer to boron so that it makes electronegativity trends work. So it's probably for some of these reasons that the group 14 hypothesis is very rarely investigated. Most folks don't make the argument that hydrogen belongs here. However, because hydrogen suffers from such a split personality, it has such an identity crisis. There are plenty of examples from throughout the years of periodic arrangements of the elements in which hydrogen is actually atop the table, sort of gracing all of that row with its, with its presence, that this hydrogen seems to be special. It's very hard to put in one single location on the table. So why not just make it the granddaddy of all the elements, place it in the middle of its row? Okay, well, that's one way to do it. But there is another way to, to give a special consideration to hydrogen in forming the periodic table. And that is in what's known as the spiral periodic table or the periodic snail, as some call the newer versions of it. Now, this is not a new idea. Some of the first periodic arrangements of the elements ever were spirals. And in fact, the first periodic arrangement, it can be argued, was a helix. But what makes a spiral special is that it allows us to place hydrogen right in the middle where its relationship to all of the elements being central to them because it is the most fundamental of them is given more emphasis. So here we have an example of Clark's periodic arrangement from 1933. And as you can see here, they place hydrogen directly in the center of the spiral at its origin. And not only that, but by drawing a few neatly placed dashed lines, this table also pays an homage to its similarities to alkali metals and to the halogens. So one might argue that the spiral periodic table is really what does justice to hydrogen's position among the elements. Now, to get a more modern look at this, we can take a look at some of the periodic tables that have come out in more recent years that still attempt to maintain this spiral arrangement. Now, here's one example of those. And as you can see, once again, hydrogen is at the very center where it has a connection to all the groups of elements, because of course, hydrogen is the fundamental building block from which all of the other elements are put together. So is it one? Is it 14? Is it 17? Is it none of them or all of them? It's still something that could be up for debate. Um, scientists could argue over this forever because hydrogen just defies placement on the periodic table in one single concrete location. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. If you're interested in more on the periodic table, please check out my course with Wondrium right now. I'll put the link down there in the description below for you as well. That's all for today, folks. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think about hydrogen's place on the periodic table. Is it currently where it belongs or should we rethink the periodic table and its shape altogether? Uh, in the meantime, that's going to do it for me this week. 
I uh, hope you enjoyed this week's Table Tuesday, and thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Professor Davis from chemsurvival.com and the YouTube channel Chem Survival. As always, I'll see you next time.